case. During the February 6th hearing on the gun bill in Oregon, an interesting exchange took place between State Senator Floyd Przanski and Kevin Sterrett of the Oregon Firearms Federation. And they said that they are in fact purging records, which was the, from my understanding, is under their administrative rules within 10 days if there's no problem. And so we have that testimony. I understand your conspiracy perspective as to what's happening is what you believe is going on as to they're not storing the records. But, you know, you can count it, uh, I guess, unless you can show that they are not doing what they're required by law, then bring it forward so we can address that. You know, Senator, you can, you can make comments about my conspiracy theories, but the fact is, is that um, there's no administrative rule, to my knowledge, that makes them destroy records in 10 days. They announced this policy as an internal policy, and this would correct me if I'm wrong, after they illegally disclosed David Piles' um, records. Let's also listen to an excerpt from Jen Lynch of the Bloomberg-funded Moms Demand Action. Records of successful gun sales are kept safely and in a manner that respects the buyer's privacy. Background check records are not subject to public disclosure. Law enforcement can only access those records during a criminal investigation. Wait, they just got done telling us those records were destroyed after 10 days. Either Jen Lynch had a Freudian slip and knows something we don't know, and we're being lied to by the state police and the politicians, or Jen Lynch just plain doesn't know. It's time to stop making policy based on imaginary threats of gun confiscation and start making policy based on the real and present danger of unregulated guns. I would challenge Mr. Przanski and Ms. Lynch to give David Piles a phone call and tell him he's a conspiracist, that it was all imaginary when the SWAT team showed up at his door. Or Pat Kirby, who was judged to be unworthy of owning a gun and deemed incompetent because his wife handles the family finances. Or Arthur Lovey, who had his hundred-year-old muskets confiscated. And who can forget Sergeant Matthew Corrigan's story, where he accidentally called a suicide hotline instead of the military support number, and promptly had his house raided by the SWAT team. Or what about this guy, who had his guns taken because he was accused of digging tunnels under his house? These are just a few of the stories that I found of people who have been raided and had their guns confiscated. Let's not forget that just last year in Oregon, a massive gun ban bill was introduced, HB 3200, that would have included a full registry, unwarranted searches, and confiscations. Moms Demand Action and Ceasefire Oregon were promoting this bill. Of course, even after such bills are introduced, ceasefire sympathizer Lee Coleman still calls people uh, I would describe those as uh, paranoid delusions. Combine all of this with the folks in the anti-rights movement calling this a good start. People like State Senator Ginny Burdick saying and media personalities recommending that the Connecticut State Police use their background check system to go after folks who refuse to be treated like sex offenders, one can't help but assume that a full registration and confiscation will eventually come to Oregon. I'll call on Senator Przanski, Ceasefire's Penny Okamoto and Michael DeLong, Moms Demand Action's Jen Lynch, Senator Burdick, and Governor Kitzhaber to give definitions for the terms conspiracy, registration, confiscation, and imaginary, and I also challenge them to debunk everything in this report. For more on this story and others, please visit youtube.com slash laughingatliberals.